1969, humanity did the impossible. We took our first steps on another world. But for more than 50 years, we haven't gone back. What happened? And why is everyone suddenly in a frantic new race to the moon? The answer is much more complex than just planting a flag and leaving footprints. It involves a new rivalry between superpowers, resources that could change the future of energy on Earth, and ultimately, the first real step toward becoming an interplanetary species. The truth is that returning to the moon today is more crucial than ever. Getting left behind is not an option. To understand why we are going back, we first need to ask ourselves, why did we stop? The Apollo missions, which took 12 men to the moon between 1969 and 1972, were an incredible feat of engineering. But they were born from a very specific motive, the Cold War. The main goal was to prove technological and ideological superiority over the Soviet Union. Once the race was won, public interest and, more importantly, political funding simply evaporated. The astronomical cost, which today would be hundreds of billions of dollars, became unsustainable without geopolitical competition as a driver. NASA then turned its attention closer to home, developing the Space Shuttle and the International Space Station. The moon, with its gray and silent landscapes, was left for the history books. The seismographs that the Apollo astronauts left behind still sent valuable data about moonquakes for years, but they were finally turned off in 1977, and with them, our direct presence on another celestial body came to an end. For decades, deep space exploration was left to probes and robots, but that silence is about to be broken. A new generation is looking at the sky, not with nostalgia, but with a new sense of urgency. And that urgency has a name that echoes the past, but with totally new ambitions, Artemis. If the first space race was defined by the American flag and Neil Armstrong's footprints, the second will be a much more complex competition. The United States' adversary is no longer Russia, but China, a power with gigantic space ambitions and a pace of development that is leaving everyone jaw-dropped. China has already achieved impressive feats, such as landing a probe on the far side of the moon, something no other nation had done. It managed to successfully land a rover on Mars, and its plans don't stop there. Beijing has already announced the intention to send its astronauts, or Taikonauts, to the moon by 2030. And later, in a project with Russia and other partners, to build an international research base at the moon's south pole by 2035. The rocket that will carry this mission, the Long March 10, is already in an advanced development phase with successful engine tests. This prospect, to be frank, set off an alarm in Washington. The head of NASA at the time, Bill Nelson, openly admitted that the Chinese pace is one of the main reasons for the American urgency to return to the moon. The concern isn't just symbolic. It is about the control of strategic resources and defining the rules of the game for the future of space exploration. The nation that manages to set up the first functional base on the moon, especially in places rich in resources like the South Pole, will have an immense geopolitical and economic advantage. It is a race for territory, for influence, and for the future. And the United States, with the Artemis program, is determined not to come in second place. But why is all this rush focused on the moon's south pole? The answer is frozen in craters where sunlight never hits. Water. The confirmation that vast quantities of water ice exist completely changed the game of lunar exploration. Water is, by far, the most valuable resource in space. Besides being able to be used for astronauts to drink, it can be split into its components, hydrogen and oxygen, oxygen to breathe and hydrogen as rocket fuel. This transforms the moon into a true cosmic gas station. Rockets on their way to Mars could stop at the moon to refuel, making interplanetary missions much cheaper and more viable. 
in addition to water, the lunar soil, called regolith, contains other valuable resources. One of the most promising is helium-3, a rare isotope on Earth, but which exists in abundance on the surface of the Moon, deposited by solar wind for billions of years. Helium-3 is a potential fuel for future nuclear fusion power plants, a clean and super-powerful energy source that could revolutionize our planet. Mining helium-3 on the moon is still something for the future, but the nation that masters this technology will hold one of the keys to the future of energy. And of course, there is the science. The moon is a time capsule. Its surface, without erosion from wind or rain, preserves 4.5 billion years of solar system history. The samples that the Artemis III mission plans to collect will give us clues about how planets, including Earth, formed. New seismographs could map the interior of the Moon with unprecedented precision, revealing the secrets of its core and its geological activity. So, how exactly do we plan to make this monumental return? NASA's answer is the Artemis program named after the Greek goddess of the moon and twin sister of Apollo. But this program is much more ambitious than the previous one. The motto is no longer getting there, but rather going there to stay. The plan is divided into phases. Artemis I, which was a success at the end of 2022, was an uncrewed test flight that sent the Orion capsule to orbit the moon, going further than any spacecraft designed for humans has ever gone. The next step is Artemis II. This mission will take four astronauts, including the first woman and the first black man to go to the moon, on a trip around our satellite to test all the spacecraft's systems with people on board. The date is a moving target, like everything in space, but NASA is aiming for early 2026 for the launch. The big moment will be Artemis III, the mission that will finally put human boots back on lunar soil more than 50 years after Apollo 17. And for the first time in history, a woman will step on the moon. The current goal is mid-2027, but no one will be surprised if that date slips a little, given the complexities. But the plan goes further, the long-term goal is to create a sustainable human presence. This includes building the Gateway, a space station in lunar orbit that will serve as a stopping point and laboratory and an Artemis base on the surface. To power all this, NASA is working on projects like Fission Surface Power, which wants to install a small nuclear fission reactor on the moon in the early 2030s. The idea is to learn to live off local resources building structures and sustaining life, a crucial step before we attempt the much longer and more dangerous journey to Mars. All of this, of course, has a price, and it is astronomical. The most recent government estimates point out that the cost of the program will exceed $90 billion, and that number keeps rising. It is a colossal investment, but NASA argues that the return in scientific discoveries economic opportunities, and inspiration for a new generation is priceless. We are living through the beginning of a new era of exploration, one that will define humanity's place in the cosmos for the next decades. The decisions we make now, the technologies we develop, and the way nations compete or collaborate will shape the future in ways we can barely imagine. But what about you? What do you think of all this? Do you believe that this billion-dollar investment in the Artemis program is worth it? What excites you most about this return to the moon, the science, the new space race with China, or the fact that this is the first step for us to reach Mars? Leave your comment down below. And if you are as fascinated by the future of space exploration as I am, don't forget to subscribe and turn on notifications so you don't miss the next chapters of this journey. Returning to the moon in 2026 and the following years is not a rerun of history. It is the prologue of a completely new book. It is us finally accepting that humanity's future is not confined to this planet. The first time, we went to the moon for pride and politics. 
This time, we are going out of necessity and perhaps for survival. We are going to secure resources, expand our knowledge, test our limits, and take the next logical step in our evolution as explorers. The moon is not the final destination. It is the gate to the rest of the solar system. And we are finally ready to turn the handle.